Welcome to Gut Health Insights number one. In this first episode, I'll talk about the microbiome and its role to gut health, a topic that has become quite popular both in the lay media, but also amongst microbiome scientists. As gastroenterologists, we know a lot about specific microbes and gut diseases. So for example, uh, stomach ulcer uh, with H. pylori being the well-known uh, microbe that uh, is responsible for the uh, man clinical manifestations. Um, and on the right side, a case of um, uh, infectious uh, colitis or enteritis um, infection of the um, intestine. Both of these disorders, like many other diseases, are um, have several things in common. So they're endoscopically detectable. Um, they're caused by a single pathogen, by a bad bacteria. Uh, they show, they present with an acute pathology. Um, and the symptoms are generally got limited except for um, systemic um, symptoms such as uh, fatigue and uh, um, chronic pain. So if we talk about poor gut health, it's a very different situation. Um, even though everybody talks about this concept, if you did an endoscopy on all the people that think they're suffering from poor gut health, you wouldn't see anything, a normal appearing um, gut. Um, but it is a, a disturbance of the gut micro microbial composition, so-called chronic dysbiosis. Um, and there, widespread, uh, there can be widespread symptoms of a, uh, in this situation. So here's the healthy gut again, um, the healthy appearing gut again. What's underlying this mucosal surface is a very complex system, which has been called um, the gut connectome, a system of millions of nerve cells, uh, the enteric nervous system of immune cells, the biggest part of the um, body's immune system is located there, um, and a, a variety of cells that line the gut um, that contain, some of them containing uh, hormones or endocrine mediators. And then we have the gut microbiome being in very close proximity to this very complex system, uh, this gut connectome. So a healthy gut, we would consider one that um, exhibits coordinated interactions of neurons, immune cells, endocrine cells, um, and uh, the luminal microbial organisms. Now, these microbial organisms, you know, trillions of them, it's been estimated in up to 100 trillion organisms uh, are present uh, from the stomach all the way into the uh, large intestine. They don't just exist in isolation and do bad things to, or good things to our gut lining like the pathogens do, but they produce a, an enormous amount of signaling molecules, so-called metabolites, which then are distributed both in the gut to these various cell types, but also um, to the immune system and throughout the body, reaching all organs in the body, including the brain. We'll come back to this in a minute. Now, these microbes, um, their food consists basically of the same food that we ingest, um, um, plant-based foods being the, uh, the best um, uh, food, particularly a variety of these uh, plant-based foods that create a highly diverse um, and uh, rich um, um, microbiome. It's illustrated here on the, the food pyramid for the Mediterranean diet. So just imagine the complexity, very different from what we know from a single organism that causes an ulcer or an infection. Um, trillions of organisms producing hundreds of thousands of chemicals, these chemicals interacting with each other and then ultimately affecting our body. Now, the microbes, uh, before they can sort of spread their message throughout the body, they have to interact with the gut connectome, as we've heard. And there's a bidirectional communication. The gut microbes produce these, um, these molecules, these metabolites, which interact with receptors, uh, the nerve cells, immune cells. Uh, and the gut produces molecules 
that feed back on the gut microbes and change their behavior. Now this system, this very complex system um, has evolved in evolution as a very re uh, resilient um, mechanism to adapt us to the diet that we have been eating as humans and our ancestors um, for hundreds of thousands of, of years. Um, however, things have happened in the last uh, 75 years with the um, rapid changes um, going along with uh, accelerated industrialization in the West, but also in developing countries. And they are mainly um, related to changes in lifestyle, particularly diet, uh, increasing amount of chronic stress, um, then changes in, um, in medical practices with vaccination, antibiotic use, um, constantly increasing hygiene measures, um, and also the um, effect on the early development of the gut microbiome, what was called the early colonization, birth in hospitals, antibiotic administration early on in life. So these environmental changes have caused a state of dysbiosis. And that state has, um, is present in everybody. And it has, as I said, increased uh, dramatically in the last 75 years. So it has altered the composition and uh, uh, the makeup and the function of the gut microbes. And what's important to realize is the, the gut microbial system has the ability to rapidly adapt uh, to new circumstances or to new diets uh, and all these other things that have been going on um, um, in, in, in our industrialized societies. So rapid adaptation uh, of both their composition and their function to the changing influences, uh, this possibly or likely is related to the fact that they have a much, much larger number of genes um, and gene products they can produce uh, and on the epigenetic influences. So our gut microbiome has kept track with these traumatic changes and this dysbiosis basically represents a state of adaptation to a very different world that we're living in today. Now, if you look at the gut, the situation is quite different. The gut, uh, as humans, we have only about 15,000, we have 20,000 genes. Um, the, the, the time it takes for genes to adapt to, um, to new circumstances is between 10 and 15,000 years. So a very slow process, um, certainly much slower than, um, uh, or, or much longer than the 75 years that, that the, the microbiome has had time to adapt to it. So now what's happened is a mismatch between what happened to our microbes and what happened in our gut. Not much has happened in our gut, uh, except now that this mismatch has resulted in, or is resulting in a systemic immune system activation, something that's called met metabolic endotoxemia, um, low-grade immune activation throughout the body, um, affecting basically all the organs we have in the body, and come back to this in a minute. So our dramatic lifestyle changes through the gut, the gut microbiome uh, has resulted in a situation of um, disseminated immune system activation affecting many of our organs. Now to look a little bit closer, what happens when I talk about this mismatch and, and what happened actually uh, between the microbes and, and our uh, immune system. So if we look at a healthy gut, uh, we have a highly diverse um, um, population of microbes, rich in, in relative abundances. We have a thick mucus layer that separates the microbes from the intestinal uh, lining. There's a few, it's quite a few uh, immune cells throughout the gut that send their sensors or their tentacles into the mucus layer to make sure that there's no bacteria uh, and no warning lights have to go off. Um, and this healthy gut is associated with a healthy diet consisting of complex carbohydrates, high fiber, and with high fiber degradation, high diversity of the gut microbiome, <coughs> 
high abundance of mucus stimulating microorganisms and high abundance of certain microbial taxa that we know are associated with a uh, healthy uh, diet. We also have an intact uh, gut barrier. Um, now this situation has changed dramatically with the lifestyle changes that I mentioned previous slides. So chronic stress and um, typical Western diet or standard American diet or acronym SAD with a large amount of refined carbohydrates and sugar, particularly high fat from animal sources, low fiber, uh, reduction of fiber degradation, decreased gut microbiome diversity, a decrease in the abundance of mucus stimulating microorganisms. Um, and now what's happened <coughs> because of this reduction in the mucus layer, um, the microbes actually get into this inner portion of the mucus layer and come in contact with these immune cells. So even though there's no infectious agent or um, uh, pathogen, there is an activation of the immune system now, um, which can lead to a loosening of the, the, these um, barriers between these cells making up the gut lining. Um, some of the microbes may actually get through the epithelial barrier uh, getting directly in contact with the immune cells. This results now in a what's been referred to as this metabolic endotoxemia, meaning systemic immune activation in response to a metabolic situation, not to an infection. Now, not everybody who has that. So just, um, you know, I want to remind you that a large proportion of people living in Western countries in the US have this metabolic endotoxemia. It's been estimated that um, at least 40% of 50-year-olds uh, and going up to 60, 70% of older people have this unhealthy state, this systemic immune activation, but not everybody gets sick. So it has to be combined with an increased genetic risk for any one of these diseases that this becomes a trigger um, for a chronic disease. And this could be depression, chronic liver disease, colon cancer, cognitive decline in Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and metabolic syndrome and several other uh, diseases. So the link between a diet, particularly a unhealthy diet, um, and these diseases we, is the gut situation. So gut health is, has an importance way beyond the gut itself. This is illustrated in some other way. So the diseases, the chronic non-infectious diseases that make up um, the current epidemic of, um, of chronic disease that we live in, in most Western states and increasingly in developing states. Um, these are all diseases that have uh, relationships with, with each other, for example, if you have metabolic syndrome, you're more likely to get Alzheimer's disease, more likely to get depression, um, more likely to have cardiovascular disease. And there's interactions be between most of these. What I wanna emphasize in this talk at the core of all of this is our gut health. And as we heard before, in terms of the gut health, one of the most important factors um, is our diet. Um, other lifestyle uh, factors uh, such as chronic stress, lack of exercise, lack of sleep or poor sleep are all contributing to this as well. But I want to highlight in this talk the importance of uh, gut health in relationship to the diet. So in summary, a healthy gut microbiome is essential for a healthy gut. The areas lifestyle factors and medications, in particular diet, chronic stress, and antibiotics, can negatively affect the gut microbiome. A mismatch between an altered microbiome and the gut results in aberrant or false immune act system activation with widespread effects on the body, on all the organs of the body. And the genetic predisposition, predispositions of an individual determine the specific disease manifestations of this metabolic endotoxemia. So I hope you found this um, brief overview informative. We'll provide you with many more similar kind of presentations. Um, 
If you want to learn more about these topics, you can go, you can pre-order now before its publication of my next book, The God Immune Connection, which will deal with, which is essentially dealing with this topic of how our gut and immune system is underlying uh, many of our current health uh, problems. Thank you for your attention.